The second book of Samuel, chapter 1. Now it came about after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, that David remained two days in Ziklag. On the third day, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul, with his clothes torn and dust on his head. And it came about, when he came to David, that he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. Then David said to the man, From where do you come? And he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. David said to him, How did things go? Please tell me. And he said, The people have fled from the battle, and also many of the people have fallen and are dead, and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. So David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? The young man who told him said, By chance I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, and behold, Saul was leaning on his spear, and behold, the chariots and the horsemen pursued him closely. When he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me, and I said, Here I am. He said to me, Who are you? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. Then he said to me, Please stand beside me and kill me, for agony has seized me because my life still lingers in me. So I stood beside him and killed him, because I knew that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown which was on his head, and the bracelet which was on his arm, and I have brought them here to my Lord. Then David took hold of his clothes and tore them, and so also did all the men who were with him. They mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and his son Jonathan, and for the people of the Lord and the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. David said to the young man who told him, Where are you from? And he answered, I am the son of an alien, an Amalekite. Then David said to him, How is it you were not afraid to stretch out your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men and said, Go, cut him down. So he struck him, and he died. David said to him, Your blood is on your head, for your mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. Then David chanted with this lament over Saul and Jonathan his son, and he told them to teach the sons of Judah the song of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jeshar. Your beauty, O Israel, is slain on your high places. How have the mighty fallen! Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice, the daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. O mountains of Gilboa, let not dew or rain be on you, nor fields of offerings, for there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, and the sword of Saul did not return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and pleasant in their life and in their death, they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you luxuriously in scarlet, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How have the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle! Jonathan is slain on your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was more wonderful than the love of women." How have the mighty fallen, and the weapons of war perished? Chapter 2 Then it came about afterwards that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to one of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. So David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, To Hebron. So David went up there, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. And David brought up his men who were with him, each with his household, and they lived in the cities of Hebron. Then the men of Judah came, and there anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, It was the men of Jabesh-Gilead who buried Saul. David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh-Gilead, and said to them, May you be blessed of the Lord, because you have shown this kindness to Saul your Lord, and have buried him. Now may the Lord show loving kindness and truth to you, and I also will show this goodness to you, because you have done this thing. 
Now therefore let your hands be strong and be valiant, for Saul your Lord is dead, and also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner the son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, had taken Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. He made him king over Gilead, over the Asherites, over Jezreel, over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, even over all Israel. Ishbosheth, the Saul's son, was forty years old when he became king over Israel, and he was king for two years. The house of Judah, however, followed David. The time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Now Abner the son of Ner went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon with the servants of Ishbosheth the son of Saul. And Joab the son of Zeruiah and the servants of David went out and met them by the pool of Gibeon. And they sat down, one on the one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. Then Abner said to Joab, Now let the young men arise and hold a contest before us. And Joab said, Let them arise. So they arose and went over by count, twelve for Benjamin and Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. Each one of them seized his opponent by the head and thrust his sword in his opponent's side. So they fell down together. Therefore that place was called Helkath Hazurim, which is in Gibeon. That day the battle was very severe, and Abner and the men of Israel were beaten before the servants of David. Now the three sons of Zeruiah were there, Joab, and Abishai, and Asahel, and Asahel was as swift-footed as one of the gazelles which is in the field. Asahel pursued Abner, and did not turn to the right or to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Is that you, Asahel? And he answered, It is I. So Abner said to him, Turn to your right or to your left, and take hold of one of the young men for yourself, and take for yourself his spoil. But Asahel was not willing to turn aside from following him. Abner repeated again to Asahel, Turn aside from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then could I lift up my face to your brother Joab? However, he refused to turn aside. Therefore Abner struck him in the belly with the butt-end of the spear, so that the spear came out at his back. And he fell there and died on the spot. And it came about that all who came to the place where Asahel had fallen and died stood still. But Joab and Abishai pursued Abner, and when the sun was going down, they came to the hill of Amma, which is in front of Gaia, by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. The sons of Benjamin gathered together behind Abner and became one band, and they stood on the top of a certain hill. Then Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Do you not know that it will be bitter in the end? How long will you refrain from telling the people to turn back from following their brothers? Joab said, As God lives, if you had not spoken, surely then the people would have gone away in the morning, each from following his brother. So Joab blew the trumpet, and all the people halted and pursued Israel no longer, nor did they continue to fight any more. Abner and his men then went through the Araba all that night. So they crossed the Jordan, walked all morning, and came to Mahanaim. Then Joab returned from following Abner, when he had gathered all the people together, Nineteen of David's servants besides Asahel were missing. But the servants of David had struck down many of Benjamin and Abner's men, so that three hundred and sixty men died. And they took up Asahel and buried him in his father's tomb, which was in Bethlehem. Then Joab and his men went all night until the day dawned at Hebron. Chapter 3 now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, and David grew steadily stronger, but the house of Saul grew weaker continually. Sons were born to David at Hebron. His firstborn was Amnon by Hinoam the Jezreelitess, and his second, Chiliab by Abigail, the widow of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third, Absalom, the son of Maacah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur, and the fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith, and the fifth, Shephatiah, the son of Abital, and the sixth, Ithriam, by David's wife Igla. These were born to David at Hebron. 
It came about while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David that Abner was making himself strong in the house of Saul. Now Saul had a concubine whose name was Rispah, the daughter of Aiah, and Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? Then Abner was very angry over the words of Ishbosheth and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Judah? Today I show kindness to the house of Saul your father, to his brothers and to his friends, and have not delivered you into the hands of David. And yet today you charge me with a guilt concerning the woman. May God do so to Abner, and more also, if as the Lord has shown to David, I do not accomplish this for him, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul, to establish the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. And he could no longer answer Abner a word, because he was afraid of him. Then Abner sent messengers to David in his place, saying, Whose is the land? Make your covenant with me, and behold, my hand shall be with you to bring all Israel over to you. He said, Good, I will make a covenant with you, but I demand one thing of you, namely, you shall not see my face unless you first bring Michal, Saul's daughter, when you come to see me. So David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Give me my wife Michal, to whom I was betrothed for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, from Paltiel, the son of Laish. But her husband went with her, weeping as he went, and followed her as far as Bahurim. Then Abner said to him, Go, return. So he returned. Now Abner had consultation with the elders of Israel, saying, In times past you were seeking for David to be king over you. Now then do it, for the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and from the hand of all their enemies. Abner also spoke in the hearing of Benjamin, and in addition Abner went to speak in the hearing of David in Hebron all that seemed good to Israel and to the whole house of Benjamin. Then Abner and twenty men with him came to David at Hebron, and David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. Abner said to David, Let me arise and go and gather all Israel to my lord the king, that they may make a covenant with you, and that you may be king over all that your soul desires. So David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And behold, the servants of David and Joab came from a raid and brought much spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. When Joab and all the army that was with him arrived, they told Joab, saying, Abner the son of Ner came to the king, and he has sent him away, and he has gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king and said, What have you done? Behold, Abner came to you. Why then have you sent him away, and he is already gone? You know Abner the son of Ner, that he came to deceive you, and to learn of your going out and coming in, and to find out all that you are doing. When Joab came out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, and they brought him back from the well of Sirah, but David did not know it. So when Abner returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside into the middle of the gate to speak with him privately, and there he struck him in the belly, so that he died on account of the blood of Asahel his brother. Afterward, when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are innocent before the Lord forever of the blood of Abner the son of Ner. May it fall on the head of Joab and on all his father's house, and may there not fail from the house of Joab one who has a discharge, or who is a leper, or who takes hold of a distaff, or who falls by the sword, or who lacks bread. So Joab and Abishai his brother killed Abner, because he had put their brother Asahel to death in the battle at Gibeon. Then David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, Tear your clothes and gird on sackcloth and lament before Abner. And King David walked behind the bier. Thus they buried Abner and Hebron, and the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. The king chanted a lament for Abner and said, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound, nor your feet put in fetters. As one falls before the wicked, you have fallen. And all the people wept again over him, 
Then all the people came to persuade David to eat bread while it was still day. But David vowed, saying, May God do so to me, and more also, if I taste bread or anything else before the sun goes down. Now all the people took note of it, and it pleased them, just as everything the king did pleased all the people. So all the people and all Israel understood that day that it had not been the will of the king to put Abner the son of Ner to death. Then the king said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? I am weak today, though anointed king, and these men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too difficult for me. May the Lord repay the evildoer according to his evil. Chapter 4 Now when Ishbosheth, Saul's son, heard that Abner had died in Hebron, he lost courage, and all Israel was disturbed. Saul's son had two men who were commanders of bands. The name of the one was Beana, and the name of the other Rechab, sons of Rimon the Beorothite, of the sons of Benjamin. For Beoroth is also considered part of Benjamin, and the Beorothites fled to Gitaim and have been aliens there until this day. Now Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son crippled in his feet. He was five years old when the report of Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel, and his nurse took him up and fled. And it happened that in her hurry to flee, he fell and became lame, and his name was Mephibosheth. So the sons of Rimon the Beorothite, Rechab and Beana, departed and came to the house of Ishbosheth in the heat of the day while he was taking his midday rest. They came to the middle of the house as if to get wheat, and they struck him in the belly. And Rechab and Beana, his brother, escaped. Now when they came into the house, as he was lying on his bed in his bedroom, they struck him and killed him and beheaded him, and they took his head and traveled by way of the Arabah all night. Then they brought the head of Ishbosheth to David at Hebron, and said to the king, Behold the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life. Thus the Lord has given my lord the king vengeance this day on Saul and his descendants. David answered Rechab and Beana, his brother, sons of Rimon the Beorothite, and said to them, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from all distress, when one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, and thought he was bringing good news, I seized him and killed him in Ziklag, which was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more, when wicked men have killed a righteous man in his own house, on his bed, shall I not now require his blood from your hand and destroy you from the earth? Then David commanded the young men, and they killed them and cut off their hands and feet and hung them up beside the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the grave of Abner in Hebron. Chapter 5 then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. Previously, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and in. And the Lord said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will be a ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them before the Lord at Hebron. Then they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he became king, and he reigned forty years. At Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty-three years over all Israel and Judah. Now the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, and they said to David, You shall not come in here, but the blind and lame will turn you away, thinking, David cannot enter here. Nevertheless, David captured the stronghold of Zion, that is, the city of David. David said on that day, Whoever would strike the Jebusites, let him reach the lame and the blind, who are hated by David's soul, through the water tunnel. Therefore, they say, the blind or the lame shall not come into the house. So David lived in the stronghold and called it the city of David. And David built all around from the Milo and inward. David became greater and greater, for the Lord God of hosts was with him. Then Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David with cedar trees and carpenters and stonemasons, 
and they built a house for David. And David realized that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. Meanwhile, David took more concubines and wives from Jerusalem after he came from Hebron, and more sons and daughters were born to David. Now these are the names of those who were born to him in Jerusalem, Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibhar, Elishua, Nepheg, Jephiah, Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to seek out David, and when David heard of it, he went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines came and spread themselves out in the valley of Rephaim. Then David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up, for I will certainly give the Philistines into your hand. So David came to Baal Perazim and defeated them there, and he said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me like the breakthrough of waters. Therefore he named that place Baal Perazim. They abandoned their idols there, so David and his men carried them away. Now the Philistines came up once again and spread themselves out in the valley of Rephaim. When David inquired of the Lord, he said, You shall not go directly up. Circle around behind them and come at them in front of the balsam trees. It shall be when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the balsam trees, then you shall act promptly, for then the Lord will have gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. Then David did so just as the Lord had commanded him, and struck down the Philistines from Geba as far as Gezer. Chapter 6 Now David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand, and David arose and went with all the people who were with him to Beali Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name, the very name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned above the cherubim. They placed the ark of God on a new cart that they might bring it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Uzzah and Ohio, the sons of Abinadab, were leading the new cart. So they brought it with the ark of God from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Ohio was walking ahead of the ark. Meanwhile David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with all kinds of instruments made of fir wood and with lyres, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. But when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out toward the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen nearly upset it. And the anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah, and God struck him down there for his irreverence, and he died there by the ark of God. David became angry because of the Lord's outburst against Uzzah, and that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. So David was afraid of the Lord that day, and he said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? And David was unwilling to move the ark of the Lord into the city of David with him. But David took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. Thus the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him on account of the ark of God. David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And so it was, that when the bearers of the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. And David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouting and the sound of the trumpet. Then it happened, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, that Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. So they brought in the ark of the Lord, and set it in its place inside the tent which David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offering and the peace offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. Further he distributed to all the people, to all the multitude of Israel, both to men and women, 
a cake of bread, and one of dates, and one of raisins to each one. Then all the people departed each to his house. But when David returned to bless his household, Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How the king of Israel distinguished himself today! He uncovered himself today in the eyes of his servants' maids, as one of the foolish ones shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Michal, It was before the Lord, who chose me above your father and above all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore I will celebrate before the Lord. I will be more lightly esteemed than this, and will be humble in my own eyes. But with the maids of whom you have spoken, with them I will be distinguished. Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. Chapter 7 Now it came about when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest on every side from all his enemies, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in tent curtains. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your mind, for the Lord is with you. But in the same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one who should build me a house to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought up the sons of Israel from Egypt even to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent, even in a tabernacle. Wherever I have gone with all the sons of Israel, did I speak a word with one of the tribes of Israel, which I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great name, like the names of the great men who are on the earth. I will also appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may live in their own place and not be disturbed again, nor will the wicked afflict them any more as formerly, even from the day that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also declares to you that the Lord will make a house for you. When your days are complete and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendant after you, who will come forth from you, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will correct him with a rod of men and the strokes of the sons of men, but my loving kindness shall not depart from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then David the king went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house? that you have brought me this far. And yet this was insignificant in your eyes, O Lord God, for you have spoken also of the house of your servant concerning the distant future. And this is the custom of man, O Lord God. Again, what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. For the sake of your word, and according to your own heart, you have done all this greatness to let your servant know. For this reason you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you, and there is no God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation on the earth is like your people Israel, whom God went to redeem for himself as a people, and to make a name for himself, and to do a great thing for you, and awesome things for your land, before your people whom you have redeemed for yourself from Egypt, from nations and their gods. For you have established for yourself your people Israel as your own people forever, and you, O Lord, have become their God. Now therefore, O Lord God, the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and his house, confirm it forever, and do as you have spoken, that your name may be magnified forever by saying, 
the Lord of hosts is God over Israel. And may the house of your servant David be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made a revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. Now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are truth, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now therefore may it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing may the house of your servant be blessed forever. Chapter 8 Now after this it came about that David defeated the Philistines and subdued them, and David took control of the chief city from the hand of the Philistines. He defeated Moab and measured them with a line, making them lie down on the ground, and he measured two lines to put to death and one full line to keep alive. And the Moabites became servants to David, bringing tribute. Then David defeated Hadadizer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to restore his rule at the river. David captured from him seventeen hundred horsemen and twenty thousand foot soldiers. And David hamstrung the chariot horses, but reserved enough of them for one hundred chariots. When the Arameans of Damascus came to help Hadadizer, king of Zobah, David killed twenty-two thousand Arameans. Then David put garrisons among the Arameans of Damascus, and the Arameans became servants to David, bringing tribute. And the Lord helped David wherever he went. David took the shields of gold which were carried by the servants of Hadadizer and brought them to Jerusalem, from Beta and from Berothai, cities of Hadadizer, King David took a very large amount of bronze. Now when Toai, king of Hamath, heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadizer, Toai sent Joram, his son, to King David to greet him and bless him, because he had fought against Hadadizer and defeated him. For Hadadizer had been at war with Toai. And Joram brought with him articles of silver, of gold, and of bronze. King David also dedicated these to the Lord with the silver and gold that he had dedicated from all the nations which he had subdued, from Aram and Moab and the sons of Ammon and the Philistines and Amalek, and from the spoil of Hadadizer, son of Rehob, king of Zobah. So David made a name for himself when he returned from killing 18,000 Arameans in the Valley of Salt. He put garrisons in Edom. In all Edom he put garrisons, and all the Edomites became servants to David. And the Lord helped David wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel, and David administered justice and righteousness for all his people. Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the army, and Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilud, was recorder. Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, were priests. And Seraiah was secretary. Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Carathites and the Pelathites, and David's sons were chief ministers. Chapter 9. Then David said, Is there yet any one left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of the house of Saul, whose name was Ziba, and they called him to David, and the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, I am your servant. The king said, Is there not yet any one of the house of Saul, to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is crippled in both feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is in the house of Mekir, the son of Amiel, in Lodebar. Then king David sent and brought him from the house of Mekir, the son of Amiel, from Lodebar. Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and prostrated himself. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he said, Here is your servant. David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show kindness to you for the sake of your father Jonathan, and will restore to you all the land of your grandfather Saul, and you shall eat at my table regularly. Again he prostrated himself and said, What is your servant that you should regard a dead dog like me? Then the king called Saul's servant Ziba and said to him, all that belong to Saul and to all his house I have given to your master's grandson. 
You and your sons and your servants shall cultivate the land for him. You shall bring in the produce so that your master's grandson may have food. Nevertheless, Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, shall eat at my table regularly. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king commands his servant, so your servant will do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table as one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah, and all who lived in the house of Ziba were servants to Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, for he ate at the king's table regularly. Now he was lame in both feet. Chapter 10 now it happened afterwards that the king of the Ammonites died, and Hanun his son became king in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanun the son of Nahash, just as his father showed kindness to me. So David sent some of his servants to console him concerning his father. But when David's servants came to the land of the Ammonites, the princes of the Ammonites said to Hanun their lord, Do you think that David is honoring your father because he has sent consolers to you? Has David not sent his servants to you in order to search the city, to spy it out and overthrow it? So Hanun took David's servants and shaved off half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle as far as their hips and sent them away. When they told it to David, he sent to meet them, for the men were greatly humiliated. And the king said, Stay at Jericho until your beards grow and then return." Now when the sons of Ammon saw that they had become odious to David, the sons of Ammon sent and hired the Arameans of beth Rehob and the Arameans of Zobah, twenty thousand foot soldiers, and the king of Meachah with one thousand men, and the men of Tob with twelve thousand men. When David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the army, the mighty men. The sons of Ammon came out and drew up in battle array at the entrance of the city, while the Arameans of Zobah and of Rehob and the men of Tob and Meachah were by themselves in the field. Now when Joab saw that the battle was set against him in front and in rear, he selected from all the choice men of Israel and arrayed them against the Arameans. But the remainder of the people he placed in the land of Abishai, his brother, and he arrayed them against the sons of Ammon. He said, if the Arameans are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the sons of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will come to help you. Be strong, and let us show ourselves courageous for the sake of our people and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what is good in his sight. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near to the battle against the Arameans, and they fled before him. When the sons of Ammon saw that the Arameans fled, they also fled before Abishai and entered the city. Then Joab returned from fighting against the sons of Ammon and came to Jerusalem. When the Arameans saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they gathered themselves together. And Hadadazer sent and brought out the Arameans who were beyond the river, and they came to Helam. And Shobach, the commander of the army of Hadadazer, led them. Now when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together and crossed the Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Arameans arrayed themselves to meet David, and fought against him. But the Arameans fled before Israel, and David killed seven hundred charioteers of the Arameans, and forty thousand horsemen, and struck down Shobach, the commander of their army, and he died there. When all the king's servants so hot a desire, saw that they were defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel, and served them. So the Arameans feared to help the sons of Ammon any more. Chapter 11 Then it happened in the spring, at the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the sons of Ammon and besieged Rabbah, but David stayed at Jerusalem. Now when evening came, David arose from his bed and walked around on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful in appearance. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? David sent messengers and took her. And when she came to him, he lay with her, and when she had purified herself from her uncleanness, she returned to her house. The woman conceived, and she sent and told David, and said, I am pregnant. 
Then David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. So Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked concerning the welfare of Joab and the people and the state of the war. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. And Uriah went out of the king's house, and a present from the king was sent out after him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and did not go down to his house. Now when they told David, saying, Uriah did not go down to his house, David said to Uriah, Have you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? Uriah said to David, The ark and Israel and Judah are staying in temporary shelters, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are camping in the open field. Shall I then go to my house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? By your life and the life of your soul I will not do this thing. Then David said to Uriah, Stay here today also, and tomorrow I will let you go. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. Now David called him, and he ate and drank before him, and he made him drunk. And in the evening he went out to lie on his bed with his lord's servants, but he did not go down to his house. Now in the morning David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. He had written in the letter, saying, Place Uriah in the front line of the fiercest battle, and withdraw from him, so that he may be struck down and die. So it was, as Joab kept watch on the city, that he put Uriah at the place where he knew there were valiant men. The men of the city went out and fought against Joab, and some of the people among David's servants fell, and Uriah the Hittite also died. Then Joab sent and reported to David all the events of the war. He charged the messenger, saying, When you have finished telling all the events of the war to the king, and if it happens that the king's wrath rises, and he says to you, Why did you go so near to the city to fight? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who struck down Abimelech, the son of Jerubasheth? Did not a woman throw an upper millstone on him from the wall, so that he died at Thebes? Why did you go so near the wall? Then you shall say, Your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So the messenger departed and came and reported to David all that Joab had sent him to tell. The messenger said to David, The men prevailed against us and came out against us in the field, but we pressed them as far as the entrance of the gate. Moreover, the archers shot at your servants from the wall, so some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is also dead. Then David said to the messenger, Thus you shall say to Joab, Do not let this thing displease you, for the sword devours one as well as another. Make your battle against the city stronger, and overthrow it, and so encourage him. Now when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah her husband was dead, she mourned for her husband. When the time of mourning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife. Then she bore him a son, but the thing that David had done was evil in the sight of the Lord. Chapter 12 Then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a great many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb, which he bought and nourished, and it grew up together with him and his children. It would eat of his bread and drink of his cup and lie in his bosom, and was like a daughter to him. Now a traveler came to the rich man, and he was unwilling to take from his own flock or his own herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. Rather, he took the poor man's ewe lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Then David's anger burned greatly against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, surely the man who has done this deserves to die. He must make restitution for the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing and had no compassion. Nathan then said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, It is I who anointed you king over Israel, and it is I who delivered you from the hand of Saul. I also gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your care, and I gave you the house of Israel and Judah, and if that had been too little, I would have added to you many more things like these. Why have you despised the word of the Lord by doing evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with a sword, have taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the sons of Ammon. Now therefore, 
The sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against you from your own household. I will even take your wives before your eyes and give them to your companion, and he will lie with your wives in broad daylight. Indeed, you did it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and under the sun. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has taken away your sin. You shall not die. However, because by this deed you have given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born to you shall surely die. So Nathan went to his house. Then the Lord struck the child that Uriah's widow bore to David, so that he was very sick. David therefore inquired of God for the child, and David fasted and went and lay all night on the ground. The elders of his household stood beside him in order to raise him up from the ground, but he was unwilling and would not eat food with them. Then it happened on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was still alive, we spoke to him, and he did not listen to our voice. How then can we tell him that the child is dead, since he might do himself harm? But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, David perceived that the child was dead. So David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. So David arose from the ground, washed, anointed himself, and changed his clothes. And he came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he requested, they set food before him, and he ate. Then his servant said to him, What is this thing that you have done? While the child was alive, you fasted and wept. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. He said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who knows, the Lord may be gracious to me, that the child may live. But now he has died. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he will not return to me. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba, and went into her and lay with her, and she gave birth to a son, and he named him Solomon. Now the Lord loved him, and sent word through Nathan the prophet, and he named him Jedidiah for the Lord's sake. Now Joab fought against Rabbah of the sons of Ammon, and captured the royal city. Joab sent messengers to David, and said, I have fought against Rabbah, I have even captured the city of waters. Now therefore gather the rest of the people together, and camp against the city, and capture it. Or I will capture the city myself, and it will be named after me. So David gathered all the people, and went to Rabbah, fought against it, and captured it. Then he took the crown of their king from his head, and its weight was a talent of gold, and in it was a precious stone, and it was placed on David's head and he brought out the spoil of the city in great amounts. He also brought out the people who were in it, and set them under saws, sharp iron instruments and iron axes, and made them pass through the brick kiln. And thus he did to all the cities of the sons of Ammon. Then David and all the people returned to Jerusalem. Chapter 13 Now it was after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a beautiful sister, whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Amnon was so frustrated because of his sister Tamar that he made himself ill, for she was a virgin, and it seemed hard to Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very shrewd man. He said to him, O son of the king, why are you so depressed morning after morning? Will you not tell me? Then Amnon said to him, I am in love with Tamar, the sister of my brother Absalom. Jonadab then said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. When your father comes to see you, say to him, Please let my sister Tamar come and give me some food to eat, and let her prepare the food in my sight, that I may see it and eat from her hand. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill. When the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please let my sister Tamar come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat from her hand. Then David sent to the house for Tamar, saying, Go now to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was lying down. 
and she took dough, kneaded it, made cakes in his sight, and baked the cakes. She took the pan and dished them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, Have everyone go out from me. So everyone went out from him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the bedroom that I may eat from your hand. So Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the bedroom to her brother Amnon. When she brought them to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come, lie with me, my sister. But she answered him, No, my brother, do not violate me, for such a thing is not done in Israel. Do not do this disgraceful thing. As for me, where could I get rid of my reproach? And as for you, you will be like one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. However, he would not listen to her. Since he was stronger than she, he violated her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her with a very great hatred, for the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, Get up, go away. But she said to him, No, because this wrong in sending me away is greater than the other that you have done to me. Yet he would not listen to her. Then he called his young man who attended him and said, Now throw this woman out of my presence, and lock the door behind her. Now she had on a long-sleeved garment, for in this manner the virgin daughters of the king dressed themselves in robes. Then his attendant took her out and locked the door behind her. Tamar put ashes on her head, and tore her long-sleeved garment which was on her, and she put her hand on her head, and went away, crying aloud as she went. Then Absalom her brother said to her, Has Amnon your brother been with you? But now keep silent, my sister, he is your brother, do not take this matter to heart. So Tamar remained, and was desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Now when King David heard of all these matters, he was very angry. But Absalom did not speak to Amnon either good or bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had violated his sister Tamar. Now it came about, after two full years, that Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazor, which is near Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. Absalom came to the king and said, Behold now, your servant has sheep shearers. Please let the king and his servants go with your servant. But the king said to Absalom, no, my son, we should not all go, for we will be burdensome to you. Although he urged him, he would not go, but blessed him. Then Absalom said, If not, please let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said to him, Why should he go with you? But when Absalom urged him, he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Absalom commanded his servants, saying, See now, when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and what I say to you, strike Amnon, then put him to death. Do not fear, have not I myself commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. The servants of Absalom did to Amnon just as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and each mounted his mule and fled. Now it was while they were on the way that the report came to David, saying, Absalom has struck down all the king's sons, and not one of them is left. Then the king arose, tore his clothes, and lay on the ground, and all his servants were standing by with clothes torn. Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother, responded, Do not let my lord suppose they have put to death all the young men, the king's sons, for Amnon alone is dead, because by the intent of Absalom this has been determined since the day that he violated his sister Tamar. Now therefore do not let my lord the king take the report to heart, namely, all the king's sons are dead, for only Amnon is dead. Now Absalom had fled, and the young man who was the watchman raised his eyes and looked, and behold, many people were coming from the road behind him by the side of the mountain. Jonadab said to the king, Behold, the king's sons have come, according to your servant's word, so it happened. As soon as he had finished speaking, behold, the king's sons came, and lifted their voices and wept. And also the king and all his servants wept very bitterly. Now Absalom fled and went to Talmai, the son of Amihud, the king of Geshur, and David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom had fled and gone to Geshur, and was there three years. The heart of King David longed to go out to Absalom, for he was comforted concerning Amnon, since he was dead. Chapter 14 
Now Joab, the son of Zeruiah, perceived that the king's heart was inclined toward Absalom. So Joab went to Tekoa and brought a wise woman from there and said to her, Please pretend to be a mourner and put on mourning garments now and do not anoint yourself with oil, but be like a woman who has been mourning for the dead many days. Then go to the king and speak to him in this manner. So Joab put the words in her mouth. Now when the woman of Tekoa spoke to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and prostrated herself and said, Help, O king. The king said to her, What is your trouble? And she answered, Truly I am a widow, for my husband is dead. Your maidservant had two sons, but the two of them struggled together in the field, and there was no one to separate them, so one struck the other and killed him. Now behold, the whole family has risen against your maidservant, and they say, Hand over the one who struck his brother, that we may put him to death for the life of his brother, whom he killed, and destroy the heir also. Thus they will extinguish my coal which is left, so as to leave my husband neither name nor remnant on the face of the earth. Then the king said to the woman, Go to your house, and I will give orders concerning you. The woman of Tekoa said to the king, O my lord the king, the iniquity is on me and my father's house, but the king and his throne are guiltless. So the king said, Whoever speaks to you, bring him to me, and he will not touch you any more. Then she said, Please let the king remember the Lord your God, so that the avenger of blood will not continue to destroy, otherwise they will destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord lives, not one hair of your son shall fall to the ground. Then the woman said, Please let your maidservant speak a word to my lord the king. And he said, Speak. The woman said, Why then have you planned such a thing against the people of God? For in speaking this word the king is as one who is guilty, in that the king does not bring back his banished one. For we will surely die, and are like water spilled on the ground which cannot be gathered up again. Yet God does not take away life, but plans ways so that the banished one will not be cast out from him. Now the reason I have come to speak this word to my lord the king is that the people have made me afraid. So your maidservant said, Let me now speak to the king. Perhaps the king will perform the request of his maidservant. For the king will hear and deliver his maidservant from the hand of the man who would destroy both me and my son from the inheritance of God. Then your maidservant said, Please let the word of my lord the king be comforting, for as the angel of God, so is my lord the king to discern good and evil. And may the Lord your God be with you. Then the king answered and said to the woman, Please do not hide anything from me that I am about to ask you. And the woman said, Let my lord the king please speak. So the king said, Is the hand of Joab with you in all this? And the woman replied, As your soul lives, my lord the king, no one can turn to the right or to the left from anything that my lord the king has spoken. Indeed, it was your servant Joab who commanded me, and it was he who put all these words in the mouth of your maidservant. In order to change the appearance of things, your servant Joab has done this thing. But my Lord is wise, like the wisdom of the angel of God, to know all that is in the earth. Then the king said to Joab, Behold, now I will surely do this thing. Go therefore, bring back the young man Absalom. Joab fell on his face to the ground, prostrated himself, and blessed the king. Then Joab said, Today your servant knows that I have found favor in your sight, O my lord, the king, in that the king has performed the request of his servant. So Joab arose and went to Geshur and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. However, the king said, Let him turn to his own house and let him not see my face. So Absalom turned to his own house and did not see the king's face. Now in all Israel was no one as handsome as Absalom, so highly praised, from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head there was no defect in him. When he cut the hair of his head, and it was at the end of every year that he cut it, for it was heavy on him, so he cut it, he weighed the hair of his head at two hundred shekels by the king's weight. To Absalom there were born three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of beautiful appearance." Now Absalom lived two full years in Jerusalem, and did not see the king's face. Then Absalom sent for Joab to send him to the king, but he would not come to him. So he sent again a second time, but he would not come. 
Therefore he said to his servants, See, Joab's field is next to mine, and he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. So Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Then Joab arose, came to Absalom at his house, and said to him, Why have your servants set my field on fire? Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent for you, saying, Come here, that I may send you to the king, to say, Why have I come from Geshur? It would be better for me still to be there. Now therefore let me see the king's face, and if there is iniquity in me, let him put me to death. So when Joab came to the king and told him, he called for Absalom. Thus he came to the king and prostrated himself on his face to the ground before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. Chapter 15 Now it came about after this that Absalom provided for himself a chariot and horses and fifty men as runners before him. Absalom used to rise early and stand beside the way to the gate, and when any man had a suit to come to the king for judgment, Absalom would call to him and say, From what city are you? And he would say, Your servant is from one of the tribes of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, See, your claims are good and right, but no man listens to you on the part of the king. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh, that one would appoint me judge in the land, then every man who has any suit or cause could come to me, and I would give him justice. And when a man came near to prostrate himself before him, he would put out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. In this manner Absalom dealt with all Israel who came to the king for judgment, so Absalom stole away the hearts of the men of Israel. Now it came about at the end of forty years that Absalom said to the king, Please let me go and pay my vow which I have vowed to the Lord in Hebron. For your servant vowed a vow while I was living at Geshur in Aram, saying, If the Lord shall indeed bring me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. The king said to him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom is king in Hebron. Then two hundred men went with Absalom from Jerusalem, who were invited and went innocently, and they did not know anything. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Gilonite, David's counselor, from his city Gilo, while he was offering the sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. Then a messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. David said to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee, for otherwise none of us will escape from Absalom. Go in haste, or he will overtake us quickly, and bring down calamity on us, and strike the city with the edge of the sword. Then the king's servant said to the king, Behold, your servants are ready to do whatever my lord the king chooses. So the king went out, and all his household with him. But the king left ten concubines to keep the house. The king went out, and all the people with him, and they stopped at the last house. Now all his servants passed on beside him, all the Kerithites and the Pelethites, and all the Gittites, six hundred men who had come with him from Gath, passed on before the king. Then the king said to Ittai the Gittite, why will you also go with us? Return and remain with the king, for you are a foreigner and also an exile. Return to your own place. You came only yesterday, and shall I today make you wander with us, while I go where I will? Return and take back your brothers. Mercy and truth be with you. But if I answered the king and said, As the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, surely wherever my lord the king may be, whether for death or for life, there also your servant will be. Therefore David said to Ittai, Go and pass over. So Ittai the Gittite passed over with all his men and all the little ones who were with him. While all the country was weeping with a loud voice, all the people passed over. The king also passed over the brook Kidron, and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. Now behold, Zadok also came, and all the Levites with him, carrying the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down the ark of God, and Abiathar came up until all the people had finished passing from the city. The king said to Zadok, Return the ark of God to the city. If I find favor in the sight of the Lord, then he will bring me back again, and show me both it and his habitation. But if he should say thus, 
I have no delight in you. Behold, here I am. Let him do to me as seems good to him. The king said also to Zadok the priest, Are you not a seer? Return to the city in peace, and your two sons with you, your son Ahimaaz, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. See, I am going to wait at the fords of the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. Therefore Zadok and Abiathar returned the ark of God to Jerusalem and remained there. And David went up the ascent of the Mount of Olives and wept as he went, and his head was covered, and he walked barefoot. Then all the people who were with him each covered his head and went up weeping as they went. Now someone told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray, make the counsel of Ahithophel foolishness. It happened as David was coming to the summit where God was worshipped, that, behold, Hushai the archite met him with his coat torn and dust on his head. David said to him, If you pass over with me, then you will be a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I have been your father's servant in time past, so I will now be your servant, then you can thwart the counsel of Ahithophel for me. Are not Zadok and Abiathar the priests with you there? So it shall be that whatever you hear from the king's house, you shall report to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, their two sons are with them there, Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them you shall send me everything that you hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Chapter 16 now when David had passed a little beyond the summit, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of saddled donkeys, and on them were two hundred loaves of bread, a hundred clusters of raisins, a hundred summer fruits, and a jug of wine. The king said to Ziba, Why do you have these? And Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine for whoever is faint in the wilderness to drink. Then the king said, And where is your master's son? And Ziba said to the king, Behold, he is staying in Jerusalem, for he said, Today the house of Israel will restore the kingdom of my father to me. So the king said to Ziba, Behold, all that belongs to Mephibosheth is yours. And Ziba said, I prostrate myself. Let me find favor in your sight, O my lord the king. When king David came to Bahurim, Behold, there came out from there a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came out cursing continually as he came. He threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David, and all the people and all the mighty men were at his right hand and at his left. Thus Shimei said when he cursed, Get out, get out, you man of bloodshed and worthless fellow. The Lord has returned upon you all the bloodshed of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has given the kingdom into the hand of your son Absalom. And behold, you are taken in your own evil, for you are a man of bloodshed. Then Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over now and cut off his head. But the king said, What have I to do with you, O sons of Zeruiah? If he curses, and if the Lord has told him, Curse, David, then who shall say, Why have you done so? Then David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son who came out from me seeks my life. How much more now this Benjamite? Let him alone, and let him curse, for the Lord has told him. Perhaps the Lord will look on my affliction and return good to me instead of his cursing this day. So David and his men went on the way. And Shimei went along on the hillside parallel with him, and as he went he cursed and cast stones and threw dust at him. The king and all the people who were with him arrived weary, and he refreshed himself there. Then Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, entered Jerusalem, and Ahithophel with him. Now it came about when Hushai the archite, David's friend, came to Absalom, that Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king! Long live the king! Absalom said to Hushai, Is this your loyalty to your friend? Why did you not go with your friend? Then Hushai said to Absalom, No, for whom the Lord, this people, and all the men of Israel have chosen, his I will be, and with him I will remain. 
Besides, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? As I have served in your father's presence, so I will be in your presence. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give your advice. What shall we do? Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go into your father's concubines, whom he has left to keep the house. Then all Israel will hear that you have made yourself odious to your father. The hands of all who are with you will also be strengthened. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the roof. And Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. The advice of Hithophel, which he gave in those days, was as if one inquired of the word of God. So was all the advice of Ahithophel regarded by both David and Absalom. Chapter 17 Furthermore, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Please let me choose twelve thousand men that I may arise and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he is weary and exhausted and terrify him, so that all the people who are with him will flee. Then I will strike down the king alone, and I will bring back all the people to you. The return of every one depends on the man you seek. Then all the people will be at peace. So the plan pleased Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Then Absalom said, Now call Hushai the archite also, and let us hear what he has to say. When Hushai had come to Absalom, Absalom said to him, Ahithophel has spoken thus, Shall we carry out his plan? If not, you speak. So Hushai said to Absalom, This time the advice that Ahithophel has given is not good. Moreover, Hushai said, You know your father and his men, that they are mighty men, and they are fierce, like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. And your father is an expert in warfare, and will not spend the night with the people. Behold, he has now hidden himself in one of the caves or in another place, and it will be when he falls on them at the first attack that whoever hears it will say, There has been a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. And even the one who is valiant, whose heart is like the heart of a lion, will completely lose heart. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and those who are with him are valiant men. But I counsel that all Israel be surely gathered to you from Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand that is by the sea in abundance, and that you personally go into battle. So we shall come to him in one of the places where he can be found, and we will fall on him as the dew falls on the ground, and of him and of all the men who are with him not even one will be left. If he withdraws into a city, then all Israel shall bring ropes to that city, and we will drag it into the valley until not even a small stone is found there. Then Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord had ordained to thwart the good counsel of Ahithophel, so that the Lord might bring calamity on Absalom. Then Hushai said to Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, this is what Ahithophel counseled Absalom and the elders of Israel, and this is what I have counseled. Now therefore send quickly and tell David, saying, Do not spend the night at the fords of the wilderness, but by all means cross over, or else the king and all the people who are with him will be destroyed. Now Jonathan and Ahimaaz were staying at Enrogel, and a maidservant would go and tell them, and they would go and tell King David, for they could not be seen entering the city. But a lad did see them and told Absalom. So the two of them departed quickly and came to the house of a man in Bahurim who had a well in his courtyard, and they went down into it. And the woman took a covering and spread it over the well's mouth and scattered grain on it so that nothing was known. Then Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house and said, Where are Ahimaaz and Jonathan? And the woman said to them, they have crossed the brook of water, and when they searched and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. It came about after they had departed that they came up out of the well and went and told King David, and they said to David, Arise and cross over the water quickly, for thus Ahithophel is counseled against you. Then David and all the people who were with him arose and crossed the Jordan, and by dawn not even one remained who had not crossed the Jordan. Now when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his donkey and arose and went to his home, to his city, and set his house in order, and strangled himself. Thus he died and was buried in the grave of his father. Then David came to Mahanaim, and Absalom crossed the Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. 
Absalom set Amasa over the army in place of Joab. Now Amasa was the son of a man whose name was Ithra the Israelite, who went into Abigail the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zeruiah, Joab's mother. And Israel and Absalom camped in the land of Gilead. Now when David had come to Mahanaim, Shobai the son of Nahash from Rabbah of the sons of Ammon, Mekir the son of Amiel from Lodebar, and Barzillai the Gileadite from Rogelim, brought beds, basins, pottery, wheat, barley, flour, parched grain, beans, lentils, parched seeds, honey, curds, sheep, and cheese of the herd for David and for the people who were with him to eat. For they said, The people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. Chapter 18 then David numbered the people who were with him, and set over them commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds. David sent the people out, one-third under the command of Joab, one-third under the command of Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and one-third under the command of Ittai, the Gittite. And the king said to the people, I myself will surely go out with you also. But the people said, You should not go out. For if we indeed flee, they will not care about us. Even if half of us die, they will not care about us. But you are worth ten thousand of us. Therefore now it is better that you be ready to help us from the city. Then the king said to them, Whatever seems best to you I will do. So the king stood beside the gate, and all the people went out by hundreds and thousands. The king charged Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king charged all the commanders concerning Absalom. Then the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle took place in the forest of Ephraim. The people of Israel were defeated there before the servants of David, and the slaughter there that day was great, twenty thousand men. For the battle there was spread over the whole countryside." And the forest devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. Now Absalom happened to meet the servants of David, for Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak, and his head caught fast in the oak, so he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him kept going. When a certain man saw it, he told Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanging in an oak. Then Joab said to the man who had told him, Now behold, you saw him. Why then did you not strike him there to the ground? And I would have given you ten pieces of silver and a belt. The man said to Joab, Even if I should receive a thousand pieces of silver in my hand, I would not put out my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing the king charged you and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Protect for me the young man Absalom. Otherwise, if I had dealt treacherously against his life, and there is nothing hidden from the king, then you yourself would have stood aloof. Then Joab said, I will not waste time here with you. So he took three spears in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And ten young men who carried Joab's armor gathered around and struck Absalom and killed him. Then Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing Israel, for Joab restrained the people. They took Absalom and cast him into a deep pit in the forest, and erected over him a very great heap of stones. And all Israel fled, each to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and set up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's valley, for he said, I have no son to preserve my name. So he named the pillar after his own name, and it is called Absalom's monument to this day. Then Ahimaaz the son of Zadok said, Please let me run and bring the king news that the Lord has freed him from the hand of his enemies. But Joab said to him, You are not the man to carry news this day, but you shall carry news another day. However, you shall carry no news today, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. So the Cushite bowed to Joab and ran. Now Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, said once more to Joab, But whatever happens, please let me also run after the Cushite. And Joab said, Why would you run, my son, since you will have no reward for going? But whatever happens, he said, I will run. So he said to him, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by way of the plain and passed up the Cushite. 
Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof of the gate by the wall, and raised his eyes, and looked, and behold, a man running by himself. The watchman called, and told the king, and the king said, If he is by himself, there is good news in his mouth. And he came nearer and nearer. Then the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called to the gatekeeper, and said, Behold, another man running by himself. And the king said, This one also is bringing good news. The watchman said, I think the running of the first one is like the running of Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, This is a good man, and comes with good news. Ahimaaz called and said to the king, All is well. And he prostrated himself before the king with his face to the ground, and he said, Blessed is the Lord your God, who has delivered up the men who lifted their hands against my lord the king. The king said, Is it well with the young man Absalom? And Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant and your servant, I saw a great tumult, but I did not know what it was. Then the king said, Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. Behold, the Cushite arrived, and the Cushite said, Let my lord the king receive good news, for the Lord has freed you this day from the hand of all those who rose up against you. Then the king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? And the Cushite answered, Let the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up against you for evil be as that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept, and thus he said as he walked, O my son, Absalom, my son, my son, Absalom, would I had died instead of you, O Absalom, my son, my son. Chapter 19 Then it was told Joab, Behold, the king is weeping and mourns for Absalom. The victory that day was turned to mourning for all the people, for the people heard it said that day, The king is grieved for his son. So the people went by stealth into the city that day, as people who are humiliated steal away when they flee in battle. The king covered his face and cried out with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son! Then Joab came into the house to the king and said, Today you have covered with shame the faces of all your servants, who today have saved your life, and the lives of your sons and daughters, the lives of your wives, and the lives of your concubines, by loving those who hate you, and by hating those who love you. For you have shown today that princes and servants are nothing to you. For I know this day that if Absalom were alive, and all of us were dead today, then you would be pleased." Now therefore arise, go out and speak kindly to your servants. For I swear by the Lord, if you do not go out, surely not a man will pass the night with you, and this will be worse for you than all the evil that has come upon you from your youth until now. So the king arose and sat in the gate. When they told all the people, saying, Behold, the king is sitting in the gate, then all the people came before the king. Now Israel had fled each to his tent, all the people were quarreling throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king delivered us from the hand of our enemies, and saved us from the hand of the Philistines, but now he has fled out of the land from Absalom. However, Absalom, who we anointed over us, has died in battle. Now then, why are you silent about bringing the king back? Then King David sent to Zadok and Abiathar the priests, saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, why are you the last to bring the king back to his house, since the word of all Israel has come to the king, even to his house? You are my brothers, you are my bone and my flesh. Why then should you be the last to bring back the king? Say to Amasa, Are you not my bone and my flesh? May God do so to me, and more also, if you will not be commander of the army before me continually in place of Joab." Thus he turned the hearts of all the men of Judah as one man, so that they sent word to the king, saying, Return, you and all your servants. The king then returned and came as far as the Jordan. And Judah came to Gilgal in order to go to meet the king, to bring the king across the Jordan. Then Shimei, the son of Gera, the Benjamite, who was from Bahurim, hurried and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. 
There were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, with Ziba the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons, and his twenty servants with him. And they rushed to the Jordan before the king. Then they kept crossing the ford to bring over the king's household, and to do what was good in his sight. And Shimei the son of Gera fell down before the king as he was about to cross the Jordan. So he said to the king, Let not my lord consider me guilty, nor remember what your servant did wrong on the day when my lord the king came out from Jerusalem, so that the king would take it to heart. For your servant knows that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I have come today, the first of all the house of Joseph, to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai the son of Zeruiah said, Should not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? David then said, What have I to do with you, O sons of Zeruiah, that you should this day be an adversary to me? Should any man be put to death in Israel today? For do I not know that I am king over Israel today? The king said to Shimei, You shall not die. Thus the king swore to him. Then Mephibosheth the son of Saul came down to meet the king, and he had neither cared for his feet, nor trimmed his mustache, nor washed his clothes from the day the king departed until the day he came home in peace. It was when he came from Jerusalem to meet the king that the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? So he answered, O oh, my lord the king, my servant deceived me, for your servant said, I will saddle a donkey for myself, that I may ride on it and go with the king, because your servant is lame. Moreover, he has slandered your servant to my lord the king, but my lord the king is like the angel of God, therefore do what is good in your sight. For all my father's household was nothing but dead men before my lord the king, yet you set your servant among those who ate at your own table. What right do I have yet that I should complain any more to the king? So the king said to him, Why do you still speak of your affairs? I have decided you and Ziba shall divide the land. Mephibosheth said to the king, Let him even take it all, since my lord the king has come safely to his own house. Now Barzillai the Gileadite had come down from Rogelim, and he went on to the Jordan with the king to escort him over the Jordan. Now Barzillai was very old, being eighty years old, and he had sustained the king while he stayed at Mahanaim, for he was a very great man. The king said to Barzillai, You cross over with me, and I will sustain you in Jerusalem with me. But Barzillai said to the king, How long have I yet to live, that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am now eighty years old. Can I distinguish between good and bad, or can your servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Or can I hear any more the voice of singing men and women? Why then should your servant be an added burden to my lord the king? Your servant would merely cross over the Jordan with the king. Why should the king compensate me with this reward? Please let your servant return, that I may die in my own city, near the grave of my father and my mother. However, here is your servant Chimham, let him cross over with my lord the king, and do for him what is good in your sight. The king answered, Chimham shall cross over with me, and I will do for him what is good in your sight, and whatever you require of me I will do for you. All the people crossed over the Jordan, and the king crossed too. The king then kissed Barzillai and blessed him, and he returned to his place. Now the king went on to Gilgal, and Chimham went on with him, and all the people of Judah, and also half the tribe of Israel, accompanied the king. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king, and said to the king, Why had our brothers, the men of Judah, stolen you away, and brought the king and his household, and all David's men with him over the Jordan? Then all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is a close relative to us. Why then are you angry about this matter? Have we eaten at all at the king's expense, or has anything been taken for us? But the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, and said, We have ten parts in the king, therefore we also have more claim on David than you. Why then did you treat us with contempt? Was it not our advice first to bring back our king? Yet the words of the men of Judah were harsher than the words of the men of Israel. Chapter 20 now a worthless fellow happened to be there, whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite, and he blew the trumpet and said, 
We have no portion in David, nor do we have inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. So all the men of Israel withdrew from following David and followed Sheba the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah remained steadfast to their king from the Jordan even to Jerusalem. Then David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, the concubines whom he had left to keep the house, and placed them under guard, and provided them with sustenance, but did not go into them. So they were shut up until the day of their death, living as widows. Then the king said to Amasa, Call out the men of Judah for me within three days, and be present here yourself. So Amasa went to call out the men of Judah, but he delayed longer than the set time which he had appointed him. And David said to Abishai, now Sheba, the son of Bichri, will do us more harm than Absalom. Take your Lord's servants and pursue him, so that he does not find for himself fortified cities and escape from our sight. So Joab's men went out after him, along with the Kerethites and the Pelethites and all the mighty men. And they went out from Jerusalem to pursue Sheba, the son of Bichri. When they were at the large stone which is in Gibeon, Amasa came to meet them. Now Joab was dressed in his military attire, and over it was a belt with a sword in its sheath fastened at his waist. And as he went forward it fell out. Joab said to Amasa, Is it well with you, my brother? And Joab took Amasa by the beard with his right hand to kiss him. But Amasa was not on guard against the sword which was in Joab's hand, so he struck him in the belly with it, and poured out his inward parts on the ground, and did not strike him again, and he died. Then Joab and Abishai his brother pursued Sheba the son of Bichri. Now there stood by him one of Joab's young men, and said, Whoever favors Joab, and whoever is for David, let him follow Joab. But Amasa lay wallowing in his blood in the middle of the highway, and when the man saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa from the highway into the field, and threw a garment over him when he saw that everyone who came by him stood still. As soon as he was removed from the highway, all the men passed on after Joab to pursue Sheba the son of Bichri. Now he went through all the tribes of Israel to Abel, even beth Maacah, and all the Beerites, and they were gathered together and also went after him. They came and besieged him in Abel Beth Maacah, and they cast up a siege ramp against the city, and it stood by the rampart. And all the people who were with Joab were wreaking destruction in order to topple the wall. Then a wise woman called from the city, Here, here, please tell Joab, come here that I may speak with you. So he approached her, and the woman said, Are you Joab? And he answered, I am. Then she said to him, Listen to the words of your maidservant. And he answered, I am listening. Then she spoke, saying, Formerly they used to say, They will surely ask advice of Abel. And thus they ended the dispute. I am of those who are peaceable and faithful in Israel. You are seeking to destroy a city, even a mother in Israel. Why would you swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? Joab replied, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. Such is not the case, but a man from the hill country of Ephraim, Sheba the son of Bichri by name, has lifted up his hand against King David. Only hand him over, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said to Joab, Behold, his head will be thrown to you over the wall. Then the woman wisely came to all the people, and they cut off the head of Sheba the son of Bichri, and threw it to Joab. So he blew the trumpet, and they were dispersed from the city each to his tent. Joab also returned to the king at Jerusalem. Now Joab was over the whole army of Israel, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada was over the Kerethites and the Pelethites, and Adoram was over the forced labor, and Jehoshaphat the son of Ahilud was the recorder, and Shiva was scribe, and Zadok and Abiathar were priests, and Ira the Jairite was also a priest to David. Chapter 21 now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year. And David sought the presence of the Lord. And the Lord said, It is for Saul and his bloody house, because he put the Gibeonites to death. So the king called the Gibeonites and spoke to them. Now the Gibeonites were not of the sons of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. 
and the sons of Israel made a covenant with them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the sons of Israel and Judah. Thus David said to the Gibeonites, What should I do for you? And how can I make atonement that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? Then the Gibeonites said to him, We have no concern of silver or gold with Saul or his house, nor is it for us to put any man to death in Israel. And he said, I will do for you whatever you say. So they said to the king, The man who consumed us and who planned to exterminate us from remaining within any border of Israel, let seven men from his sons be given to us, and we will hang them before the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, the chosen of the Lord. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the oath of the Lord which was between them, between David and Saul's son Jonathan. So the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, Armoni, and Mephibosheth, whom she had borne to Saul, and the five sons of Mirab, the daughter of Saul, whom she had borne to Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Moholathite. Then he gave them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them in the mountain before the Lord, so that the seven of them fell together, and they were put to death in the first days of harvest, at the beginning of barley harvest. And Rispa, the daughter of Aiah, took sackcloth and spread it for herself on the rock from the beginning of harvest until it rained on them from the sky. And she allowed neither the birds of the sky to rest on them by day, nor the beasts of the field by night. When it was told David what Rispa, the daughter of Aiah, the concubine of Saul, had done, then David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from the men of Jabesh-Gilead, who had stolen them from the open square of Bethshan, where the Philistines had hanged them on the day the Philistines struck down Saul and Gilboa. He brought up the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son from there, and they gathered the bones of those who had been hanged. They buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son in the country of Benjamin in Zila, in the grave of Kish his father. Thus they did all that the king commanded, and after that God was moved by prayer for the land. Now when the Philistines were at war again with Israel, David went down and his servants with him, and as they fought against the Philistines, David became weary. Then Ishbi Benob, who was among the descendants of the giant, the weight of whose spear was three hundred shekels of bronze in weight, was girded with a new sword, and he intended to kill David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, helped him, and struck the Philistine, and killed him. Then the men of David swore to him, saying, You shall not go out again with us to battle, so that you do not extinguish the lamp of Israel. Now it came about after this that there was war again with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibekai, the Hushathite, struck down Saph, who was among the descendants of the giant. There was war with the Philistines again at Gob, and Elhinan, the son of Jeari Oregim, the Bethlehemite, killed Goliath the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. There was war at Gath again, where there was a man of great stature, who had six fingers on each hand, and six toes on each foot, twenty-four in number, and he also had been born to the giant. When he defied Israel, Jonathan the son of Shimei, David's brother, struck him down. These four were born to the giant in Gath, and they fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Chapter 22 And David spoke the words of this song to the Lord in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. For the waves of death encompassed me, the torrents of destruction overwhelmed me, the cords of Sheol surrounded me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress I called upon the Lord. Yes, I cried to my God, and from his temple he heard my voice, and my cry for help came into his ears. Then the earth shook and quaked, the foundations of heaven were trembling and were shaken, because he was angry. Smoke went up out of his nostrils, fire from his mouth devoured, coals were kindled by it. 
He bowed the heavens also, and came down with thick darkness under his feet. And he rode on a cherub, and flew, and he appeared on the wings of the wind. And he made darkness, canopies around him, a mass of waters, thick clouds of the sky. From the brightness before him, coals of fire were kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows, and scattered them, lightning, and routed them. Then the channels of the sea appeared, the foundations of the world were laid bare by the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from on high, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He also brought me forth into a broad place. He rescued me, because he delighted in me. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands he has recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and have not acted wickedly against my God. For all his ordinances were before me, and as for his statutes I did not depart from them. I was also blameless toward him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness before his eyes. With a kind you show yourself kind, with a blameless you show yourself blameless, with a pure you show yourself pure, and with a perverted you show yourself astute. And you save an afflicted people, but your eyes are on the haughty whom you abase. For you are my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord illumines my darkness. For by you I can run upon a troop, by my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is blameless, the word of the Lord is tested, he is a shield to all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord, and who is a rock besides our God? God is my strong fortress, and he sets the blameless in his way. He makes my feet like hind's feet, and sets me on high places. He trains my hands for battle, so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation, and your help makes me great. You enlarge my steps under me, and my feet have not slipped. I pursued my enemies and destroyed them, and I did not turn back until they were consumed. And I have devoured them and shattered them, so that they did not rise, and they fell under my feet. For you have girded me with strength for battle, you have subdued under me those who rose up against me. You have also made my enemies turn their backs to me, and I destroyed those who hated me. They looked, but there was none to save, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. Then I pulverized them as the dust of the earth. I crushed and stamped them as the mire of the streets. You have also delivered me from the contentions of my people. You have kept me as head of the nations." A people whom I have not known serve me. Foreigners pretend obedience to me. As soon as they hear, they obey me. Foreigners lose heart and come trembling out of their fortresses. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be God, the rock of my salvation, the God who executes vengeance for me and brings down peoples under me, who also brings me out from my enemies. You even lift me above those who rise up against me, you rescue me from the violent man. Therefore I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the nations, and I will sing praises to your name. He is a tower of deliverance to his king, and shows loving kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Chapter 23 Now these are the last words of David. David the son of Jesse declares, the man who was raised on high declares, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel, the Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over men righteously, who rules in the fear of God, is as the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds, when the tender grass springs out of the earth. Through sunshine after rain, truly is not my house so with God, for he has made an everlasting covenant with me, ordered in all things and secured, for all my salvation and all my desire. Will he not indeed make it grow? 
but the worthless, every one of them, will be thrust away like thorns, because they cannot be taken in hand. But the man who touches them must be armed with iron and the shaft of a spear, and they will be completely burned with fire in their place. These are the names of the mighty men whom David had, Josheb, Bashabeth, a uh, Takamanite, chief of the captains. He was called Adino the Esnite because of eight hundred slain by him at one time. And after him was Eleazar the son of Dodo the Ahohite, one of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines who were gathered there to battle, and the men of Israel had withdrawn. He arose and struck the Philistines until his hand was weary and clung to the sword, and the Lord brought about a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to strip the slain. Now after him was Shammah the son of Agi, a Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered into a troop where there was a plot of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he took his stand in the midst of the plot, defended it, and struck the Philistines, and the Lord brought about a great victory. Then three of the thirty chief men went down and came to David in the harvest time to the cave of Adullam, while the troop of the Philistines was camping in the valley of Rephaim. David was then in the stronghold, while the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. David had a craving, and said, Oh, that someone would give me water to drink from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So the three mighty men broke through the camp of the Philistines, and drew water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate, and took it and brought it to David. Nevertheless, he would not drink it, but poured it out to the Lord, and he said, Be it far from me, O Lord, that I should do this. Shall I drink the blood of the men who went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things the three mighty men did. Abishai, the brother of Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was chief of the thirty, and he swung his spear against three hundred and killed them, and had a name as well as the three. He was most honored of the thirty, therefore he became their commander. However, he did not attain to the three. Then Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done mighty deeds, killed the two sons of Ariel of Moab. He also went down and killed a lion in the middle of a pit on a snowy day. He killed an Egyptian, an impressive man. Now the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a club and snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand and killed him with his own spear. These things Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, did, and had a name as well as the three mighty men. He was honored among the thirty, but he did not attain to the three, and David appointed him over his guard. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was among the thirty, Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem, Shammah, the Harodite, Elika, the Harodite, Hilaz, the Paltite, Ira, the son of Ikesh, the Tekoite, Abiezer, the Anathathite, Benunai, the Hashathite, Zalmon the Ahohite, Maharai the Netophathite, Eleb the son of Beana the Netophathite, Ittai the son of Ribai of Gibeah of the sons of Benjamin, Beniah of Pirathonite, Hadai of the brooks of Geash, Abai Alban the Arbathite, Osmaveth the Barhomite, Elihaba the Shaalbonite, the sons of Jashan, Jonathan, Shama the Hararite, Ahiam the son of Sharar the Ararite, Eliphalet the son of Ahashbai, the son of the Maacathite, Eliam the son of Ahithophel the Gilonite, Hezro the Carmelite, Baharai the Arbite, Egal the son of Nathan of Zobah, Benai the Gadite, Zelek the Ammonite, Neharai the Beerothite, armor bearers of Joab the son of Zeruiah, Ira the Ithrite, Garib the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, thirty seven in all. Chapter 24 Now again the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and it incited David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. The king said to Joab, the commander of the army who was with him, Go about through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, and register the people, that I may know the number of the people. But Joab said to the king, now may the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times as many as they are, while the eyes of my lord the king still see. But why does my lord the king delight in this thing? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the commanders of the army. So Joab and the commanders of the army went out from the presence of the king to register the people of Israel. 
They crossed the Jordan and camped in Aroer, on the right side of the city that is in the middle of the valley of Gad, and toward Jazer. Then they came to Gilead and to the land of Tatim Hodshai, and they came to Dan Jehan, and around to Sidon, and came to the fortress of Tyre, and to all the cities of the Hivites and of the Canaanites, and they went out to the south of Judah to Beersheba. So when they had gone about through the whole land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Joab gave the number of the registration of the people to the king. And there were in Israel eight hundred thousand valiant men who drew the sword, and the men of Judah were five hundred thousand men. Now David's heart troubled him after he had numbered the people. So David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done. But now, O Lord, please take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly. When David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet God, David's seer, saying, Go and speak to David. Thus the Lord says, I am offering you three things. Choose for yourself one of them, which I will do to you. So Gad came to David and told him, and said to him, Shall seven years of famine come to you in your land, or will you flee three months before your foes while they pursue you, or shall there be three days' pestilence in your land? Now consider, and see what answer I shall return to him who sent me. Then David said to God, I am in great distress. Let us now fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, but do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning until the appointed time, and seventy thousand men of the people from Dan to Beersheba died. When the angel stretched out his hand toward Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the calamity, and said to the angel who destroyed the people, It is enough. Now relax your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Araona the Jebusite. Then David spoke to the Lord when he saw the angel who was striking down the people, and said, Behold, it is I who have sinned, and it is I who have done wrong. But these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand be against me and against my father's house. So God came to David that day and said to him, Go up, erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Araunah the Jebusite. David went up according to the word of God, just as the Lord had commanded. Araunah looked down and saw the king and his servants crossing over toward him, and Araunah went out and bowed his face to the ground before the king. Then Araunah said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor from you, in order to build an altar to the lord, that the plague may be held back from the people. Araunah said to David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what is good in his sight. Look, the oxen for the burnt offering, the threshing sledges, and the yokes of the oxen for the wood. Everything, O king, Araunah gives to the king. And Araunah said to the king, May the Lord your God accept you. However, the king said to Araunah, No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price, for I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God, which cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. David built there an altar to the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. Thus the Lord was moved by prayer for the land, and the plague was held back from Israel.